Hey, everybody. Okay, so second part of making a pitcher. Um, so these have set up overnight. They're still kind of uh, a little bit soft. I still want this somewhat malleable because I have some decorative things to do to it. Um, and it looks like today I'm only sort of getting like right up to the throat and then it sort of needs to set up. Um, it's that whole cold day clay thing. So um, I've got a couple that I've been working on and then I've got two more here to go. But um, so I thought I'd get this really quick. So the other thing that I do is I will kind of avoid this. So it, I made it round, but what I do is I kind of just gently kind of squish it in so that I have a front and a back, um, at least for this style of picture that I would like to make. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna score it up and then add some coils and then talk a little bit about darting and how all that goes. Um, Cause this can be really any shape that you want. This could, at this point, it could also be a vase form. It doesn't really have to be a pitcher. You know, this is just like a tool that I use to sort of illustrate how, um, you know, coil building, you can kind of build anything. But anyways, that's sort of where I'm at with this. So I'm going to really score this because it's a, uh, I'm connecting two different temperatures of clay together and I really want them to come together pretty well, right? So I'm actually going to put on a little bit of water. It's actually kind of goopy water because that's all I got at the moment. And so I basically just get it a little bit moist and then I'm going to come back around again and score. Um, if you have been watching the videos, you know, scoring is super important to me. And um, I think it's a, it's one of those reasons I kind of make these videos is I see people making or demonstrating things. And I'm like, they are not scoring enough. Um, scoring well is a really important aspect of, of hand building or connecting clay in any kind of way, you know, so um, saves you time to do it well. Okay, so just starting out with another soft coil straight out of the bag score this first connection. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed or if, you know, if I said it yesterday, you know, it's only the first coils that I put on um, that get kind of the scoring treatment. And then they tend to just, I attach, I don't score the next coil because I'm attaching clay that's exactly the same temperature um, as the coil below it. So it doesn't really need to be scored. That clay wants to stick together. It's typically when I'm attaching either two different sort of methods of making or uh, temperature differences. Okay. So I'm just going to rib this seam. This is a really important seam. I don't want there to be really any evidence that I stopped and started. And so I typically rib up in, a, uh, in, in some direction. Um, a lot of times if I'm doing a connection point like this, I will go around in a downward motion just to make sure that I'm filling in that little gap that's created. Um, and it depends on how hard your clay is. Like sometimes it'll be super, like I'll even sometimes put a little coil in here um, in that space between the firmer clay and the soft clay because there'll be just too much of a gap and I'll just have to backfill a little bit. But this clay is relatively, it's pretty close in temperature. And they'll even out later. Sorry, my dirty arm. Okay. So now that I've got it well attached and on there, I think what I'm going to do is basically what I start out is I, um, I really change direction on one side. And I, um, basically that sort of duck butt idea I think I mentioned yesterday. But all I'm going to do is I'm going to dart this down to a point. Okay, I'll show you there. So I just cut out a little piece of clay. That's going to get overlapped and sort of squished together. And so I'm going down into the harder clay. Um, if it was too hard, I would just build up and... Um, and then just cut into the softer clay and change directions in. But this clay is soft enough that I can sort of squish together. And then I'm gonna do two more darts on either side. Now something about darting is you don't wanna do big wide darts um, unless you really wanna change a direction. Long skinny guard darts are gonna give you enough of a direction change. But if you do little sort of short fatter darts, you're gonna get a real kind of um, change in it. 
in the directionality of the form. So just practice with darts, long and skinny, and I always overlap. I don't try to butt them up against each other. Um, there's more tendency for it to kind of crack, but you can kind of see how just those sort of skinny little darts change that direction pretty um, pretty aggressively or drastically. It's like, to me, it's not that aggressive, but it's um, enough of it to give me a, a really clear idea of where the back is going to be. And so I just want to come back in and compress those seams I just made and make them disappear. Make sure I've got some good connection points. Okay, so then what's happened is I've got this big round thing again. Um, so I'm going to basically come back and dart these sides to take out some of that extra clay and narrow this again. Because my goal is to have it come out wide and then taper back in. But I don't want it to be like a big giant um, belly on there. And so, and I just sort of gently keep getting, I want to get it exactly to the shape that I want at this stage, because like, if I don't like the shape now, I'm not going to like it as it gets taller. So I just want to be really, really intentional about the shape that I'm going after. Okay. And so you can sort of see before I do it, I've gotten it back to kind of that ovoid shape. I'm going to leave this kind of front area a little bit more kind of out because I just want that to have the big sort of belly of a pitcher so that it has all that kind of flow idea happening. And so I'm just going to clean up my seams now, make those disappear. And then I'll add another coil. Okay, we're already at seven minutes, so... Um, I'm just going to be, be mindful. It's like these longer videos I think are better for you guys just to be able to see what I actually do versus the like animated ones where it's like just a really quick sped up version. But they take a little while to make. I never think of what I'm doing in minute segments, but just trying to get stuff done. Sometimes I think of it in episodic statements as I'm... Uh, I'll watch some TV shows or listen to podcasts while I work. Okay. Okay, so now I think I'm ready for another coil. My shape looks pretty good. Um, what's going to happen is I'm going to put another coil in and then probably readdress the backside because I've lost a little bit of that directionality. But I'm going to put a coil on just to sort of tie together that top edge. Okay. out of frame there you go and so one of the things that I want to do is really work on pulling the wall of this tighter so kind of shortening that coil and you can't really see maybe up from top I'm just sort of tightening up that circle with the coil attachment so I'm kind of pulling the wall to the coil and that'll help with so I won't have to dart quite as much um, and I'll just be able to contain it and not have to dart as much, which is nice. I will still have to dart because really I'm making an asymmetrical shape and I'm really after that directionality shift and change. Um, and I can't really do that completely with just adding coils. So another thing too, um, I'm sort of forcing myself to sit, but a lot of times when I'm getting to this stage, I'll stand up and then rib because it feels a little bit better. I can rib that clay over my hand in, in a better direction than when I'm sitting down. So when I'm working on taller things, I tend to get up and down a lot more and just make sure that um, I'm treating my body kindly because you can really do some damage to your hands if you're working in a really weird way or you'll find like you get home and your shoulder hurts for some reason, mostly because you've probably been holding it at a weird angle all day. So if, yeah, you feel like you're kind of hunched up on the clay, it's a good idea to maybe change position, um, stand up, move this or move your chair up, whatever kind of works with 
in your circumstance. Okay, so now this is my back in this little butt corner here. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dart it again and pull it in because I really want this directionality to be a little bit stronger. And again, for these back ones, I do a three because it's like long and narrow, but you can see how that one is, it's just not enough. And I just want it tapered gently around. And I am taking out a little sliver and then, as you guys can see, and then I just overlap these just gently, you know, not uh, probably about a quarter of an inch at the most, depending when I squish it down. But, and it's like a quarter inch at the top and just barely overlapped at the, the bottom of the dart. Okay. I'll do a couple more little darts here just to get this in shape. And sometimes, you know, it's really intuition. If I have really thick clay, I'm gonna take the clay out. If my clay is nice and thin or feels a little thin, I'll just overlap the clay and not worry about it um, taking out that extra clay. But if you don't take out sometimes extra clay, all you'll do is rib it back out to the exact sh shape that you had it in. So it's a, a practice thing to really understand what you're doing with the clay and how much clay you're working with. Um, for me, pitchers are meant to be relatively light because you're going to have liquid in there that is, you know, for the, it's like, this is a, almost a gallon of liquid. I want to make sure that, um, my, my, uh, pitcher isn't eight pounds in addition to the eight pounds of water. Okay. So I'm going to stop there and then continue on and sh then show you how I work the spout and stuff. But that's basically how I just continue to coil up and work on a pitcher. Thanks guys.